Since we were in elementary school, we have all sat down and taken a test. Most of us have taken a test every year, sometimes every week, and for a few of us, even every day. Testing in academics is synonymous. Since we were young, we have always been in the testing world and college board education, US education, maybe education in general around the world is all testing based. So we've all experienced taking tests. We've understood the mental pressure, the anxiety, the nervousness, the stress that comes with the special major exams such as the SAT, ACT, MCAT, etc. But there are five psychological testing traps that we fall under that if we avoid, we can do so much better on any exam. And please stay till the end because you will see that I will have two Discord invites randomly pop up on the screen without telling you guys without any notifications. And the first two people to use those invites will get a free membership to my Discord. So let's get into this video. The first major psychological trap that I'll be talking about is the confirmation bias when it comes to testing. So the confirmation bias is basically when you look for findings or you look for details that support your answer and you ignore anything that discourages your answer from being correct. And this is a major psychological trap that not only test takers fall under, but scientists fall under as well, which is why a lot of studies are criticized, some studies are invalidated, because they see that the findings are only using pieces of data that support their hypothesis versus incorporating all the findings that they have found that maybe even disprove the hypothesis. What a lot of students fail to realize is that when they see four choices, they usually lean towards a choice initially right away. Just because they want to get the test over with, they want to move on to the next question, and they really don't want to spend time taking in all that question has to offer. Guys, I stress to eliminate three or four choices before picking your final answer. Most tests will have like four choices, so eliminate three. By finding the reasons that three of the four questions are wrong, you are eliminating the confirmation bias because you are not finding information that only suits your answer. The second major psychological trap that we all fall under is answer patterns. Guys, how many times have you looked at your Scantron and been like, whoa, I picked five A's in a row. This is the sixth answer. There's no way that this is also A. There's no way. There's no way this test will have six A's in a row. We have all done that. I'm a victim of this trap as well. And there is a very easy way to approach this trap and not fall under it. Now, guys, yes, maybe the past five questions you have all selected A for. But how do you know that all those five questions were A? What if uh, question two, three, four were B, C, D? So now the last five questions weren't A. So you have to treat question six independently from the previous five questions because you have no way of telling if the previous five questions are correct. So maybe the pattern isn't six A's in a row. Maybe it's actually two A's and three C's and six is actually A. So you cannot base your current question on previous questions. What students fail to realize is that the Scantron making machine picks answers for questions randomly. Every question is treated independently. The Scantron machine isn't trying to make a cool pattern like a zigzag, a, a cross, a certain um, straight lines, horizontal lines. That's horizontal line. That means you picked A, B, C, and D. That's not what the Scantron machine is trying to do, guys. So please treat every question independently, and that's how you avoid this trap completely. The third major trap, this is the one that hits everyone. This is probably worse than the answer pattern trap because this trap can literally get anyone for any exam. A lot of people tend to change their right answer to the wrong answer. Now, why is this? Well, when we first see a question, we use all the knowledge that we possibly know for that question and use it on that question. So all the processes, all the formulas, all the tricks and tips, we use all that information when presented with a new problem that we've never seen before. And we select whatever answer we get. Now, when we come back to the question later on and we review the question, we aren't using the same processes, the same level of performance as before because this problem is no longer new. This problem is an old problem, right? Your brain and yourself have seen this problem already. So now you're not redoing the problem. You're probably like, this is right, this is right, this is right. Oh, this part of the problem is wrong. Wait, is it wrong? Ah, oh, so many doubts. And that's when you start getting doubts in your brain and you start thinking, okay, maybe my answer choice is not correct. And then you end up selecting the wrong one, you get your test back and you find out that A was correct and you get selected A initially. But upon review, you change it to D and now you're hating yourself. And that's what we don't want because self-love. So how do you avoid this trap? Well, guys, only change your answer choice if you know absolutely 100% that your current answer choice is wrong and that the one you're changing it to is correct. What do I mean by this? Say you're presented a question, what color does red and yellow make when mixed? Well, say you circle purple, right? And then you actually mix red and yellow and you find out that it makes green. 
In that case, you want to change your answer from purple to green because you legitimately found a fact. You have proved to yourself that yes, purple is wrong and green is correct. Oh my no! So you absolutely know 100% that green is correct. So yes, then in that case, you can change your answer. Otherwise, always stick to your gut. I know teachers say this all the time, stick to your gut, stick to your gut feeling. In life, stick to your gut feeling. Guys, do that even for tests. And the next trap is time crunch. Guys, time crunch hits all of us, right? But for some of us, it hits us really hard. Certain tests, you will see that you have 40 questions left and you only have 30 minutes to do it. And then you enter in panic mode and then you start rushing so you don't run out of time. Guys, what people don't understand is that tests are made with every question not having the same difficulty. So yes, while you may have 30 minutes left for 40 questions, what if your next 12 out of 15 questions all take you only 10 seconds? With that speed, you've already caught up your time and now you're on pace to finishing the test with a minute per question versus like 45 seconds per question. So don't base your entire time limit off of the question you are currently on and how many questions you have left. Because certain questions take a much faster amount of time, while certain questions take a longer time. So time is like relative, it's not 100% accurate when taking a test. Only when you're at like the five minute mark do you have a true understanding of whether you're under a time crunch or you're not. Because what you don't want to do is you want to rush and then find out that you have 10 minutes left to do one problem. And then you're like, oh, I have plenty of time. But all those problems you rushed over, you probably got them wrong. So that's what you don't want. And the last trap. This trap hits us before we even take the exam. That is a mental pressure that we put on ourselves. No one else puts it on us. Okay, maybe sometimes your parents do. But you put it on yourself or some you know, close relatives put it on you. And that mental pressure adds up when the nervousness hits in, when the stress hits in, when the anxiety kicks in. And then all of a sudden, your brain is feeling like it's about to explode before you sit down and take the exam. Guys, scientific findings have proven when you're nervous for an exam and you're taking the exam with like a nervous behavior and you're nervous and, and you have a lot of distress versus you stress, you will not perform well on the test. You are not at your optimal arousal slash optimal performance level. When you are at that level, that's when you do the best. And when you're nervous, anxious, and stressed, you are not at that level. So don't hype up these exams within your brain before taking them. While your parents may be like, hey, hey, Johnny, yeah, the SAT is gonna decide your life. Guys, that's not true. No one test, no one exam can decide, no exam period can decide what's gonna happen with you in life. Maybe you just failed your college final. It doesn't matter. You have another one. Maybe you failed your midterm. It doesn't matter. You have another one. Another one. LeBron James hasn't taken a college final and he has four rings and a video of him and his $450 million worth of assets were just shown. So guys, you already know. You don't need to take tests to be successful. Okay, there's so many other ways to be successful. Even if you fail one exam, you can probably take it again and do better the second time. So don't stress. Don't add that mental pressure and you guys will do perfectly fine. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and you understand how to avoid these key five psychological testing traps. And now the next time you take a test, you'll keep these in mind and you'll do much, much better than you ever have on any exam. And you absolutely destroy the exam and get into the college of your dreams or get into the grad school of your dreams or whatever. So thank you guys for watching. Join my Discord. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please like, share, comment, subscribe. If you've made it to the end, comment down RV Psychology and I'll shout you out in my next video. Thank you guys for watching. Peace out, dude. Peace out, dude. Peace.